You are looking to animate some models in Blockbunch, but how do you go about it? In this follow-along tutorial, I will show you how to set up a few different character rigs. Hi, I am Arts by Kev, and welcome to another Blockbunch tutorial. We will be adding cubes, folders, and move the pivot points to make them work as we intend for them to do. I'm going to start up brief with a simple character, then we're gonna make a four-legged creature, and at the end, talk about something a bit more convoluted. I am always going to refer new users to generic models, because this is where you have the most freedom of choice in terms of what you're gonna be doing in this software. Create new model, and then confirm. If you haven't already seen my basics tutorial on Blockbench, go and watch that. It will set you ahead of what we're going to do next. Starting by adding a cube over here to the right hand side, we got a cube in the center of our scene. Before we do anything else, let me just quickly mention the pivot tool up here. The pivot is the origin of the model. When you rotate the model, it's going to rotate around the pivot, and that's about all you have to worry about. If you move the pivot up to here and rotate, it's going to rotate from around there. If I move it one step further, it will rotate from here. And the same thing happens if I move it up here and start rotating. Yes, you can see our pivots work. They are the origin of our cube, but pivots can also be added to bones, and bone pivots are the ones that controls where things animate. I'm going to click on add a group over here to the right hand side. That creates a bone. I can call this bone whatever I'd like it to be named. If you have nothing selected when you create a bone, it is going by default to end up in the center of your scene. If I have this cube selected, and I click on add group, or create a bone that is, because that's what it says, adds a new group or bone. This bone will instead be added to the origin of this cube that I had selected. If I click on the pivot tool, you'll notice as I have the bone selected here in the outliner, it is up here, the same spot as where the cube's pivot is. This is very worthwhile knowledge because instead of having to set up the bone separately afterwards, we could theoretically build a rig with the cubes and then make the bones as we need as we go. Okay, so let's start from scratch by building a simple Minecraft character. I'm going to make a cube and move it over to the side here. I'm then going to scale it up and then make sure that it's tall enough for this uh, Minecraft that I've made here. Now I'm going to move the pivot of my cube to the top of the cube where I want the leg to bend from. If I were to rotate now, you can sort of see what the goal is here. If you feel like you need to know more about these tools I'm using, move, scale, and rotate, then go and check out the tutorial linked in the description below. With this pivot now moved on this particular cube, I can dupe this cube by Control D. I can move the cube up to here into the center and scale it to the side to create the width of my body. The issue here is now the pivot is on the top. I will move it from the top down to where the hip is located so we can then bend the torso back and forth. There we go. Next, I'm going to take the leg once more, dupe that, move it out to the side and up. Select the pivot once more with the pivot tool, move that into here and then two snaps down. That is going to work as our shoulder joint for our character. So now I can rotate the arm like so and also bend it outwards and inwards, even though that seems like a bit of a weird motion for a character to do. In 3D, you can animate things to go through and up and down as you like, because there ain't no collisions when you're animating. Then lastly, gonna take this body and move that all the way up to here. Perfect, make sure they align at the bottom and then bring that down so this is eight by 8 by 8 and those values are derived from here where you can see the size saying 8 8 and 8. That is the base of our Minecraft character. Now I can take these two parts and flip them to the other side. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna save myself some time with the rigging because as of right now we've just made a model. With no rig we can't animate this. Look if I go into the animate tab and I click on add animation Confirm. I can't select anything. What does it say? Well, you cannot animate this type of geo element. Create a group to animate it. Aha! A group. A bone is a group. A group is a bone. They look like a folder. So basically, a bone is a group that is a folder. That is a group that is a bone. Confusing? Well, you just have to get used to it. Now, this bone has been put at the bottom of the scene because I had nothing selected. What about we use that clever trick I showed you? I select the head. I click on add group. Aha, uh -huh. interesting. Seems like it's inherited the pivot of the head. But this is just an empty bone. If I go to the animate tab and I click on this bone, I can sure animate the bone. But it's not gonna move anything because there's nothing inside of it. Hmm. Let's take this cube and pull and drag it onto the bone, like so. Did you notice that they created an arrow here? Yeah, that means the cube is now inside of the bone. So if I go back to animate, I click on this bone, I can indeed start rotating the head. Hmm. And this is something you should always be doing. Name your bones to the pieces they're supposed to represent. I'm gonna call mine head. Just simply double click on the bone and rename that. If you accidentally double click and tap to the side, you can also just backspace and then type in head or whatever other part of the body you're using. Now let's do the same on the body. I'm gonna take a bone. I'm gonna rename that bone body. Do this in this order because that's gonna save you time down the lane. I have this cube here. Pull that into the body bone. Okay, so in the animate tab, I can now rotate the head. I can now rotate the... Oh. Hmm. 
That's weird. Wouldn't it be nice if the head followed the body? We will have to do this for the arm as well. Okay, let's start with the arm. Create a group. Perfect. We're gonna call this one left arm because that is the left arm. But just say, wait a second, isn't that on the right side? No, that's not true. You see this N down here. That N points in the north direction of your model. The north direction is what's considered as your model's front side, the face. If this is the front of the model, we will have to be behind the model to figure out what side is what. And indeed, this is the left arm. Let's take the cube of the left arm and move that into the left arm bone. Perfect. So now the problem is, the body does not move the arm and the head with it. How do we do that? Well, as you may figure, it's just as easy as pulling this bone down until you get this blue line here, or just simply slap it onto the body bone like so. Make sure that you've selected the entire folder of the left arm when you do so, because you can have multiple cubes in here, you see? Make sure that you're selecting the bone. Don't accidentally select the cubes and move them, that's gonna break things and have you to undo the process that you've just gone through. The head, same thing there. And now if I collapse the body bone with clicking this arrow, you'll notice that everything is hidden, which means they are now connected to the body. Now I'm going to teach you something else that is quite useful to know. If I go into the animate tab, you'll notice that the order of events are uh, a cube, which is our leg that we haven't given a bone to, we have the body, we have the left arm and we have the head. We should change the order of these to make them more lenient to work with. It's always good to keep the head at the top of your list. So I'm going to move it until I see this blue bar, drag it and drop it in between the body and the cube. The cube is part of the body. This is the body's cube. Remember that. Then the left arm, I'm going to drag and pull and drop above here. So you see the line above this cube. If I accidentally move it too far, do you notice that subtle highlight change of the head? Well, if I drop it here, it's going to be inside of the head bone. That would be kind of weird. That means if I rotate the head, now the arm follows. Oh no! So I want to make sure that this left arm is actually highlighting this cube when it's creating the blue line above it. There we go. Now it is outside of the head bone and inside of the body bone. The safest way to do this is to collapse the head bone first or any other bone you have open above and then pull it up so it can only go in between this bone and this cube. There we go. Nice and easy. Go back into the animate tab. And now if I move the body, nice! Arm sits where it's supposed to sit, head sits where it's supposed to sit. Let's post them as well, just for the sake of fun, so we can see this in action. Yeah, it all seems to work. Now when we have gotten this far, it is time to duplicate this to the other side. Left arm, copy, transform, flip. And it's now on the other side of the body. And it's also inside of the body bone, because we've already rigged it to be inside of there. If I undo that for a second, you'll notice that the left arm is now named left arm 2. Hmm. If your model has been built at the very center of the scene, you can utilize the transform flip tool to flip it and make sure that the name that you have here, if it has a left or a right agent to it before, which means that you have written left underscore or right underscore, L underscore and R underscore are also sufficient for doing this. You can just simply flip and it's going to switch name to the new side that it's supposed to be on. So for the leg, do you remember how to do this? We take the leg, we add a group, we rename the group, left leg, we move this cube into the leg, and with this leg selected, we dupe it, control D, go to transform, flip, and flip on X. Now we have a right leg and a left leg, a right arm and a left arm, a body and a head. But wait a second, you may say if you're paying attention, why isn't the legs inside of the body? Hmm, that's actually a really good question. Now I so happen to know a few things about rigging, but for the sake of fun, let's take these two legs and just move them inside of the body bone. Go into the animate tab and rotate the body. Nice! Everything follows along. Okay, so let's say I want to create a sprint cycle to my character. And I also want it to lean forward. Oh no! This will cause problems down the lane. I actually want to teach you a trick as to how to make sure that your legs are more easily animatable on something like a character. I am going to deselect everything, which I can do by just clicking here in the outliner, outside of some of the bones. And now I am going to add a group. I am going to rename this one Controller. I'm going to take the body bone with everything that's inside of it and move that into the controller. I'm then going to take the left leg and move it into the controller and the right leg and move it into the controller. Why in this order? Well, it just is consistent with the way I did the arms. So we've got controller, body, head, left, right, left and right. Now this is our full character rig. As you notice here in the animate tab, there ain't any cubes listed. Like we can see when we're in the edit tab. In the animate tab, all Blockbench cares for are the bones you have here. What's inside of them will move, what's not inside of them, well, simply won't. Now with this setup, I can move the upper body like so, I can move the arms out, I can move the legs out, but I can also move the body separate to the legs. But how then do you move the full character? Have you noticed how I'm clicking directly on the cubes here? 
I can't do that for some of these bones because the controller bone really doesn't have a cube per se that I can select. What I can do is to click on the controller out here and then move the controller around. And I'm calling it a controller because this controls my entire character's position at all times. I can put this into rotate and rotate my character like so like so and it all rotates at once and then i can go in and animate individual pieces separate from one another body legs head and if i move the leg this way look we got a really weird kind of around the corner sprint that our character is doing probably being chased by cops because he's stolen some really good information like how to use blockbench for example if you now want to make more animations you can just simply click add animation up here there you go if you click on the first one, that's the post we just created. If you now want to animate this, I have some old tutorials laying about that still are relevant to this day, but I'm going to come back to you with a proper animation tutorial down the lane. And you can make as many animations as you please down here to test out different poses for your character rig. So this is now a basic character with two legs, arms and torso. If you want to make it easier to tell your parts apart, you can select one of your bones out in the outliner, right click and then simply go to mark a color and select a different color for them. I'm gonna make that one yellow, I'm gonna make this one purple and I'm going to make this leg green. There we go. Oh, and I almost forgot about the arm. Mark a color. Um, light blue. No, these are not the colors of my model. These are just preview colors to help you see things apart. If I want to make a texture for my model, I have to select everything here, go down to create texture, and then set up a texture for my character. That's what a base texture looks like. And this is what it looks like with a higher resolution. But with the texture made, you can't benefit from that color schedule. So what you can then do is to press the C slash Z button on your keyboard, which will toggle through a few different rendering modes. Here, for example, we have just this really boring gray color. Do it once more. We then see our colors that we selected and added to the model. Once more, we see the wireframe, which shows us the twists of this model. Every square face is built out of two triangles, for, for math purposes. And this final one shows us in one different angles our UV textures are applied. It may look messy, it makes probably no sense unless you're really into textures and want to know more about how they're laid out. And now when we know how to set up a character rig, how to do some poses and animation, how to set up all of the information, how to name the bones properly, and even how to set up these different parts with different colors whilst remodeling to make it easy to see where we are. I am going to change this model into an animal beast. In your case, I want you to do it from scratch by simply taking everything we've learned here today. But since I am lazy, I'm going to take the left arm and right arm and delete them. I'm going to keep the head, but move the body down, make it longer. There we go. Move the left leg forward and the right leg forward. I'm now going to copy my right leg, move that backwards, call that right underscore rear leg. And if I wanted to be really clear, I would also call this one right front leg. Being even lazier, I'm just going to delete the left leg. Take the right rear leg, dupe that, transform, flip X. Take the right front leg, dupe that, transform, flip X. Looks a bit clunky. Let's make this body slightly wider. There we go. Now I'm gonna move these out and I can just do that with using the arrow keys and looking at this from this angle to move them to the side. The arrow keys are relevant to what angle you're watching the model in. I tap the left arrow key, right arrow key, left arrow key, right arrow key, left arrow key, right arrow key. Interesting, right? You can play around with that for yourself to figure out exactly how they work. And then we have the rear leg. There we go. One of the other things I want to do with my creature is to pull in the body a little bit to make sure we understand that this is the rear end of the animal. Perfect, we can tell the different legs apart just by looking at the model itself. And then left we have the head cube. Hmm, do I move the head to here on the corner of the animal? I guess that kind of works. Yeah, it doesn't look all too shabby. But what I will be doing is to take the pivot and moving that into here. Notice that I'm selecting the bone not the cube inside the bone, because that pivot is still located at the center of the head where it was. And I think myself that's gonna work, because animals usually have a really strong connection to the spine and a heavier front head. Let's also add a nose to this guy. Copy the cube, move that out, and scale it down to your heart's content. That's an interesting animal, for sure. Perhaps I wanna add a pair of ears as well. Let's do that. Copy this out, move it to the side, scale it in, scale it in. Hmm. Something like that. Since I was duping this cube instead of creating a new one, they're already inside of the head bone. Keep that in mind as you're working, because it's going to save you time down the lane. Now this little creature, if we take a look at it in the animate tab, has a controller, it has a body, it has a head, and it has four individual legs. Something that will immediately break when I start animating is if I move the body like this, or like that, the legs are not connected. I can take this leg, move it all the way over here, connect it to there, and then start rotating it into place to connect with the body, similar to where it was before. This is in many cases still the best way to animate anything that has legs. Just keep them disconnected from the body. If I want this guy to stand on his front legs, let's do this. There we go. 
and take the controller bone and move that up so they connect to this bottom surface. Conceptually, this animal is now lifting its rear end by maybe doing a bit of a happy jump. Let's also move the head backwards to really signify that this guy is having some fun. Hmm. Looks a little bit broken, but hey, that's a problem for another day. Finally today, I wanted to show you how to make a quick tentacle, because tentacles are quite problematic things to animate, but they're a lot of fun as well once you get the hang of it. We are going to create a cube, like so. Move that out and make it big enough for us to add another tentacle segment. Make sure that the pivot of this cube is at the bottom of it. I'm going to then add a group. Call this one Tentacle. Take this cube and move it inside of the tentacle. Now, in order to build a tentacle, we just simply take this and copy it a lot of times and connect them to another. How do we do that? Let's dupe this one, Control D, move that up to here. Make sure you're moving the full thing, not just the cube. Take Tentacle 2 and put that inside of Tentacle 1. I am not putting it just inside of Tentacle 1 so it's at the bottom, I'm putting it above the cube because I'm more interested in seeing that my rig looks alright than I have to worry about the cubes. I know there's only two cubes in the scene as of right now anyways. Do that again! Move this up, take Tentacle 3, move that into Tentacle 2. Since these are all the same and named the same, I can be very lazy and just select Tentacle 1, dupe and copy all of that, so we now have Tentacle 4, 5 and 6 over here. Select Tentacle 4, move all of them up to the top, and then pull that into Tentacle 3. Now we've got a tentacle with 6 segments. So if I go into the Animate tab, I can now rotate Tentacle 1, Tentacle 2, Tentacle 3, Tentacle 4, Tentacle 5, and Tentacle 6 to create a tentacle bendy shape. And yeah, you can start rotating it in different angles and directions as well. There aren't no rules really to what you can imagine, but I hope that what you've seen today has brought some more imagination to your plane of what you're gonna do next. And I'd be excited to see. So please do join the Arts by Kev Discord and share stuff in the Blockbench tab. And if you're not already subscribed and enjoy what you've seen so far, consider subscribing and leaving a like on the video so more people can find this information and enjoy it themselves. Learn to create stuff in Blockbench. And with all of that said, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Aha. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay.